What's up friends, I got a brand new video for you today. And today we're gonna to talk about AI and more specifically Photoshop's new beta and their new AI generative fill because it's crazy. And I've watched a bunch of videos on it. I'm sure you've seen a couple as well. And I wanted to make a video that made more sense to my portrait photography and how it worked with my portraits and my workflow and how I could crop and reframe things. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. I don't have a segue, let's go. All right, so we got the beta version of Photoshop open here and I shot these images this past weekend and they're pretty dope. But like I was saying previously, this is gonna change our workflow because now we can recompose, reframe, basically just add things that didn't exist. And so I shot this vertically, but what if I had wanted it to be horizontal? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna take the crop tool here and we're just gonna extend this out. Hit enter, use the selection tool here, select slightly into the image and do the other side. And then down here, this is the new toolbar for all the AI stuff. We can go to generative fill here. And then it's gonna ask you if you wanna add some prompts. I'm not gonna tell it to do anything. We're just gonna let it do its own thing and see what it comes up with. <laughs> Man, that's insane. Every time I've seen this do this on other images, it's crazy, but it's cool to see it every single time it does it. So you get three different choices. So the first choice here is what it came up with. It's usually the best, but let's see what the second choice looks like. <laughs> it added rocks that didn't even exist and that's pretty sick and the third option isn't that good so the second option is actually really cool adding these extra rocks in here but i feel like the first option is probably the best and it's insane that it can do this and so one thing i really notice is that if you go up here and you can see that there's noise on the original image and then on the generated stuff there isn't any noise so you could basically rasterize this and then we can go up here to filter and go to noise and then add noise. And so right now it's set to uh, 3%, 4% too much, 2% pretty good. So let's leave it at 2% and then I'm gonna add sharpening to that just to kind of sharpen the noise a bit. And maybe we'll do one more time, it's too much. So that's gonna make it blend a little bit better. You're not gonna see the noise where it starts and ends, but that is insane. It's awesome. I don't know how it's doing it, but let's take a look at another image here. Okay, so I have the second image here. Obviously it's really awesome, but there's a ton of headroom and I kind of did that on purpose for Instagram just to kind of be able to move it around. But what if we properly frame this? So I'm going to duplicate the layer, take the crop tool, center it about there. And I feel like the headroom should be about there. But now I kind of want to see if we can extend the legs down. So let's go about here, right below her knee so that it hopefully can generate right below her knee. So we're gonna take the selection tool. I'm gonna to select just a little bit into the actual image here. Go and generate a fill. And we could type, you know, legs in water or something like that, but let's just see if it can figure it out on its own. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, how does it do this? So it created legs out of thin air and it extended the water and the little like pools of swirls in the water. That's our first option. So let's see if there's some better options here. So option two and then option three. I feel like option one was pretty much perfect dead on. We pan right back out of here on this image and take a look at it. I would say that maybe this leg looks kind of small, but I also don't know if like, depending on how she was standing, whether this thigh would have been a little bit bigger. And now this is basically the proper framing for Instagram and I was able to add a little bit more legs. And speaking of Instagram, when it comes to framing Instagram, it's always annoying if you have a shot that you didn't shoot wide enough, you gotta extend the edges or kinda reframe it in a way that you don't want to. So let's actually reframe an image here for Instagram, which is something I do all the time as it is, but now we can just generate different backgrounds for it. So let's go here to uh, new, and these are the proper dimensions here, 1080 by 1350. So I'm gonna drop in this image, and this image would fit perfectly for an Instagram frame as it is because I shot it in a way that would be scaled properly. So that's how it would look if I was gonna just scale it up for Instagram anyway. But what if I wanted all that extra headroom and some of the edges here, and then maybe even a little bit more dress at the bottom because that looks like a really nice frame right there. So I'm gonna select this chunk, I'm gonna select this chunk, and then we're gonna select right at the bottom here a little bit of the dress and see if it can recreate some of this dress. So we're gonna go generate a fill. I'm not gonna type anything in here and just go generate. 
I'm very curious what it's gonna do with the dress here and see if it can actually extend it down or if it completely fails. And it did a pretty good job. Um, that's our first option too. So let's look at the next one. Ooh, we got some more turbulent waters in this one. I don't know, one's pretty good. Three is also very good. But I'm gonna stick with one. And so now we've got like the perfect frame for Instagram where we would typically have to kind of finagle some stuff and it just does it right on the fly. And I would, again, add the noise just so it kind of blends the image better. And yeah, but this has all been black and white photography. So what about color? So this is an image I shot the other night and we use flash on this one. But basically what I wanna do is extend the image down a bit and take some of that headroom out of the image. So we're gonna zoom out a bit here. We're gonna duplicate this layer. Gonna crop it, I'm gonna bring this down a bit, maybe bring this edge over a bit, and then come down a little bit further. And let's see if it knows those are boots and if it can add more boots. So I'm gonna do the selection tool here. Selection tool up on this side. Generate a fill, I'm not gonna type anything in, just see what it does. And it knew those were boots because it added boot texture and reflections and extended the background on both sides. And it did a pretty good job. It kind of messed up here, but that's our first choice. So let's see what the second choice looks like. Second choice, not quite as good. Third choice, even worse. So the first choice is pretty good. And that's insane that it can just figure out a reflection on a boot. Cause look what happens. There never was that chunk of boot down there. It added like flash reflections and stuff, which is insane. All right, so I have one more image I really wanna get crazy with here. And this shot was a vertical shot. And I feel like this would look really epic with some crazy farm landscape and like a barn or something. So let's do that. I'm gonna crop this to like a 16 by nine. So like a cinematic scene here. Let's do something like this. And so let's see what it can do. We're gonna select this area here, select into the frame a little bit. And what's crazy is we're only selecting this tiny little bit, but I guess it's looking at the image overall. Not typing anything in, generate a fill, generate. I have low expectations for this one, but we're gonna see what it can do. What? Jeez. Okay, that's our first, that's the first one too. Here's our second option, which is also crazy. It's adding like these little mohills, knoll hills, what are they called? <laughs> Next one. Okay, I don't, there's something off about this one. But the first one is really good. We've generated this now, so let's rasterize that. And so now we're gonna get crazy. So we're gonna get the selection tool here. And we wanna keep all this stuff. So we're just gonna select all this. And then I'm gonna go invert because we don't want to generate over top of that. We want to generate outside of it. You could also do a uh, select subject, but I feel like in this scenario, it wouldn't do a very good job because there's all these little strands here. But let's go to generative fill. And let's say something like storm clouds. <laughs> okay, so it added these crazy clouds. They're a little bit too epic, so let's see what the next option is. That's not bad. That's also pretty good. But I'm not a huge fan of that, so let's thumbs down that. And let's try it again. Let's try uh, like dark, dark storm clouds. Okay, so these clouds aren't as intense. I wouldn't call them darker though. Ooh, those are pretty sick. That's not bad, but this side feels a little empty. What if I called them rain clouds? <laughs> wow, it has no idea there. Okay, so that's that's the first big fail that it's had. Ooh, those are nice. <laughs> Good job, Adobe. Wow. 
Okay, so it's funny that it goes from like this to this. And I'd say that's probably the best it did for cloud. So let's keep those. So we're gonna rasterize those. Okay, so what if we wanted to add some trees? I'm not gonna get too specific about the tree. I could say like dead tree or cactuses. Let's just try tree for now. I have no idea where it's gonna place the tree. I should have said like tree left or tree right, but let's just see what happens. Why did it remove my clouds? That's pretty cool. And it has the light coming from the right way and the shadows from the right way. Ooh, I really like that. Dang, that's cool. I like this tree, but I don't know why it removed our clouds. I think that if I was to take this mask, because basically all this is is a mask, and we brush over this, we can bring back the clouds actually. So let's do that. Yeah, there we go. So let's bring back these clouds. As you can see, this is crazy. It's high res, it's matching the rest of the image. Obviously these things are gonna fall out of focus in the background. I, oh, I just noticed a little glitch here, but I mean, that's easy to fix. You could fix that in two seconds. But it's pretty crazy that this is what our final image looks like coming from this. And it just generated it out of thin air. And it looks pretty dang good. Like you've got all the light and shadow coming from the right direction. You've got a storm cloud in there. It extended the background. And obviously if I went in there and tweaked a few things, I could make it look perfect. All right, so this is this is just beta. This is how good it is at beta. And I think that, you know, two to three years from now, it's gonna look crazy. Like if you look at where Mid Journey came from last year to what people are creating on it now, it's mind blowing some of the stuff I've been seeing. And so this is just early beta. This is what you can do with it. And I think this makes sense for my workflow, especially if you're just reframing for Instagram relatively simple for it. But if you wanna add crazy stuff to the background, I think it's got a little ways to go. But uh, yeah, what do you think? Are you guys worried about AI? Because we're not gonna know what's real in the next couple of years. Things are gonna be so realistic looking, we won't have any idea what's going on. So I'm kind of scared when it comes to that, but it's pretty cool when we're using it as a creative tool. And so I think that's it. I'm gonna end the video there. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one.